is a theory that man, like time, has two identities. Time's countenance is day, and its alter ego is night. Breeding, intelligence, generosity, and mercy are the characteristics which civilized man must show the world in order to take his rightful place in it. But in some, there may be a dormant force underneath the veneer of civilization. A grasping, murderous, pitiless animal of hate and frenzy, which, when unleashed, can become a scourge whose only joy is blind destruction. How are you this evening, Lucy? Well enough, dear. Have you had your dinner? Mm-hmm. Yes. I've just finished mine, Frank. The roast was excellent. Yes. I've told Hilda to bring you some milk later on. Are you comfortable? Quite. What book would you like? I'm quite content with the papers, Frank. If there's something you want, you only have to ask for it. I know that, darling. Thank you. I've been reading the account of the new research foundation. I'm very proud of my husband. Oh, now, Lucy. When your name's in the newspapers, I can never get enough of it. You're so appreciated, loved by so many. All the papers overdo it, Lucy. All I've done is donate a little money to a worthy cause. You've spent your whole life with worthy causes, Frank. You'd have been a multimillionaire by now if you hadn't given so much away to charity. Well, I've still got enough to get by on. And I've made certain you have a handsome income for life if anything happens to me. Oh, Frank, please don't talk that way. Nothing's going to happen to you. You never know. Oh, no, you've got to live, Frank, for a long, long time. The world would find it hard to do without you. (laughs) I think you're prejudiced. Thousands of people have you to thank for a new start in life. And even with everything you've done, you've always found time to bother with me. Now, darling. If only I could be of some help to you. If only I weren't a hopeless invalid lying here in bed day after day. Lucy, please, I don't like to hear you speak like that. All right. But you could make me less self-conscious of it. If you would. How, How do you mean that? Well... Frank, darling, you never go out unless it's connected with business or charity. You never have any fun. I appreciate my home. I don't enjoy leaving it. You mean you feel guilty about leaving me alone? Now, Lucy... It happens every day. You deny yourself because of me. I overheard you talking to Frederick Walsh before you refused his invitation. That's just the sort of thing I don't want you to do. Oh, I can do without cocktail parties. Frank, you're still young, darling. I want you to get some pleasure out of life. But I do, Lucy. Darling, don't you see it's easier for me when I know you're not making additional sacrifices? Hmm. You'd uh, feel better if I went out occasionally? Yes, much better. Well, we'll see about it. No. I want you to start right now. Tonight. I want you to go to Frederick's party. Oh, it'll probably be a bore. You know it won't, Frank. He's always had such interesting people for friends. I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Lucy, I did rather fancy the idea for a moment. There now. That's all I wanted to know. Now, you get yourself dressed and go to that party. And give my best to Fred. Are you sure you won't mind? Why should I? Well, all right, then. I'll I'll run over for a couple of hours. Good. Uh, Well, what are you waiting for? For a moment, I had a feeling that... Don't forget about it. I don't know why. I... Oh, I'm being rather silly, aren't I? I don't know why I said that. Oh, well, good night, Lucy. Good night, Frank. Just make sure you come back to me when the party's over. Frank, old man, this is a welcome surprise. How are you, Fred? Couldn't be better. And you? Oh, I'm quite well, thanks. I never expected you to show up tonight. You said you couldn't make it. Well, I changed my mind. Or rather, Lucy changed it for me. Good for her. How is dear Lucy? I'm complaining as usual. Oh, she sent a love. Poor girl. Uh, Life's not an easy one. No. Neither is yours, Frank. I can appreciate it. Oh, I'm happy in my own way. Oh, I I didn't mean... No, no, of course, of course you didn't. Uh, Let's drop the subject, shall we? Mm. Well, I uh, see you have your usual crowd here tonight. Yes, I, I think you know most everyone. Uh, Lorenzo over there at the piano is giving a big concert this week. Yes, he's a magnificent musician. Uh, and uh, Harriet Kane is here. Her play over six months, you know. Yes, and if it's as successful as her last one was, she'll deserve plenty of praise. Yes. I think you know almost everyone. Uh... Oh, except Viola, perhaps. Viola? Viola Hazen, the woman in the corner with a drink in her hand. Mm, that name sounds familiar. Well, she's quite a sculptress, very popular in Europe. She's just returned. Hasn't been home for 15 years. Uh, when the Nazis took Paris, she hid away somewhere. No one actually knows how she got along. Uh, at any rate, she's here, and I'd like her to meet you. Well, don't bother about introducing me around, Fred. I... Uh, just let me introduce you to Viola, and I'll leave you in peace. You'll find she's extraordinary company. Uh, come with me. Viola, my dear. This is a 
a charming party, Frederick. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I want you to meet a very good friend of mine, Frank Cameron. Viola Hazel, Frank. How do you do? How do you do? You must have heard of Frank. He's the modern Santa Claus. Uh, plays Mr. Moneybags to every worthwhile project. Now, Fred. Oh, yes, Mr. Cameron's reputation has preceded him. I'm very impressed. I, I wouldn't pay any attention to Frederick. I believe he's a disappointed press agent. Oh, <laughs> <is that? laughs> All right, coming right in, Bob. Uh, will you excuse me, please? Of course. A drink. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. And here's one on the tray. Thank you. Shall we propose a toast? Yes, if you like. Here's to death and all it holds for us. If it's an odd toast. I'm a very odd person, Mr. Cameron. Mm. You look just as I imagined you'd look. Oh? I've heard and read about you often. Frank Cameron, heaven's gift to the underprivileged. You sound disapproving. I don't have very much use for philanthropy. It's a hypocritical pastime. Uh, that's not quite fair. Shocker and our song. Your French is clearer than your philosophy, Miss Hazen. Oh, call me fairly. It's simpler. Why do you feel a philanthropist is a hypocrite? A man who gives his money away is trying to cover some inner theme of guilt. Oh, right then. I'm a potential murderer. You may be. One never knows. Well, I, I think you've had too much to drink. On the contrary, I know what I'm talking about. On the surface, you're respectable, generous, home-loving. I take it you have a home. Yes, and a wife. Oh, she probably thinks you're wonderful. But you're undoubtedly beginning to think so yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not quite that conceited. But underneath all that veneer... Well, underneath it, what am I? I'd find out if I made a sculpture of you. You mean these inner trays I have would show up in your work? When I carve, I don't see my subject from the surface. Something happens to me when I work. I only see what the subject is really like beneath his layer of flesh. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I don't have time enough to let you make the experiment, Viola. <laughs> you mean you're sorry you don't have enough nerve? Now, really, you're going a little too far. Oh, the outraged male. Well, if you ever feel you have courage enough to learn what you really look like underneath, you might drop in and see me. The experiment might be amusing. <laughs> I can always find a little time to be amused. I suggest you don't count on Oh, but I will. You men are all alike. You're more curious than women. You drop around and I'll be waiting for you. Just look me up. I'm in the phone book. I shall be looking forward to you very soon. Is that you, Frank? Yes, Lucy. Well, did you have fun? Oh, oh well, the party was pretty, pretty dull. Didn't you meet any interesting people at all? No, no one to speak of. Uh, I, uh, I just dropped in to see if you were all right. Yes, I'll have a cigar in the library and perhaps some brandy, and then I'll, I'll turn in. Frank? Yes? What's the trouble? Why, nothing. You sound uneasy. Oh, it's just your imagination, dear. Put the light on and let me look at you. <laughs> well, you satisfied? You're, you're sure you're not worried about anything? Quite sure. Now you go to sleep. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Oh, by the way, John Wilkins called while you were out. Huh? What for? He wanted to remind you of that conference tomorrow at noon. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. You're going, aren't you? Well, the... There was something I was thinking of doing. Then you'd better call him in the morning and tell him. Yes, yes, I will. As a matter of fact, I believe I'll see him after all. That, that, that other thing I mentioned was something silly, and I've changed my mind about it. Yes, I've changed my mind. Good night, Lucy, dear. Come in, won't you? Thanks. You, uh, act as if you were expecting me. I was. Oh, this whole thing is ridiculous. Last night I made up my mind I wouldn't accept your childish offer. Then why are you here? I don't know. Curiosity, perhaps? Oh, no, it's more than that. Oh, what do you mean? Cigarette. Hmm? Oh, yes, thank you. Let me mix some drinks. No, no, please don't. I can't stay with it long. <laughs> You're frightened. Of you? 
That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. You're frightened of what might happen if I modelled you in stone. Now, look here. I think this joke's gone far enough. All this this nonsense about the inner me and so on, it doesn't amuse me anymore. Don't be angry. I'm not angry, but I think it's rot. Would you like me to prove it to you? Yes, if you can. What's your charge? (laughs) Whatever you wish to pay. And how often would I have to come? Every evening a day for three or four hours. We could begin tonight if you could. Now, is it a bargain? Will you be here this evening? Yes, I'll be here. One thing I want you to remember, however. The responsibility is yours. What responsibility? For whatever happens when you learn the truth about yourself. been on this earth for many years, and in the course of time, he has risen from the primates to his present status as the most intelligent of animals. But there are a few who have not come quite so far, and who continue to teeter upon the narrow perch that divides civilization from aboriginal chaos. Uh, How much longer, Viola? Just a second, and you can take a break. All right, relax. Uh, Why do you always cover the statue after you finish? Because I don't want you to see it yet. It's been five days and I'm getting curious. You'll see it when it's finished. It's been rather nice being here in the evenings. Hmm. You seem to have a lot more time to spare than you thought you'd have. Well, I've managed to arrange my affairs so that... So that your wife wouldn't know? That's stupid, Bielder. But it's true, isn't it? Haven't you been keeping this from her? What if I have? (laughs) Nothing, it just amuses me, that's all. Sometimes I think you have no heart. (laughs) And what's so funny? (laughs) You're so naive. Don't make fun of me. Are you falling in love, Frank? What? With me. Why, that's... That's ridiculous. Is it? (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) What kind of a woman are you, anyway? Don't you have any sensitivity at all? Come here, Frank, and I'll show you how sensitive I am. I don't think we should have. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it before, <laughs> I... before you what? I... I... I didn't mean I'm sorry. Oh, so you can be angry and barbaric. I was right. Yes, well, perhaps it is time for you to see what I've done. I'm not finished, but uh, I'd like you to tell me what you think of it so far. You want me to uncover the statue? Yes, go ahead. I don't know if I should. Frightened? Go on, Frank, go on. See yourself as I see you. All right. Why? Why, that's... That's not me. Look closely. It looks... More like some kind of monster. It's not finished, but it's well on its way. That's not a man, that's... An ape? Yes, Frank. If you faced yourself honestly, you'd know what it means. All men are like that underneath. Their souls are foul and decaying. You really hate, don't you? I have reason for it. Look at the face, Frank. The fangs in its mouth and the eyes. Look at it closely and think of yourself. Stooped, your arms dragging. Look at the ape, Frank, that walks like a man. You had that coming to you. Oh, good, good, very good. Now you're being honest. Now you're giving away to your real desires. You must be out of your mind. I'm never coming back here. You'll come back. You know you'll come back to me. Welcome home. I thought you were never coming back. 
I came for that statue. Why? I'm going to destroy it. I won't. I'm going to get rid of it. No. Not until it's finished. I've been working on it. Let me see. It's two weeks since you left here. Do you know what they've been for me? Do you know how I've suffered because of you? No, not because of me, Frank. Because of yourself. It's rather difficult to admit what we really are to ourselves. It's hard to believe that anyone could do to me what you've done. You've taken my confidence. You've made me afraid. You've torn me down like a piece of your clay to amuse yourself. Let me show you how far I've gone in my work. I am going to destroy that statue of yours. Come here. Look at it again. It's horrible. It's the most frightful thing I've ever seen. I have a name for it, Frank. Do you know what it is? No, and I don't want to hear. I'm calling it the ape man. I'll smash it to pieces. Frank! Why don't you face the facts? What facts? You know you hate the life you've been leading. You know you hate your wife. No. She's like an anchor around your neck. Your whole life has been like that. You've repressed your inner feelings. You've, you've made out to be something that you're not. Stop it, Why don't you be a strong, strong like I am? Why don't you admit that you come from the jungles and that's where you want to return? No, no, you're completely insane. You must be. Take me in your arms, Frank. Kiss me, kiss me. If you want to kiss me. I could kill you. Frank? Frank, is that you? Yes, Lucy. Frank? Where are you? Put on the light. No. I prefer the dark. Lucy, I'd like to ask you something. Frank, your voice sounds so strange. Are you happy, Lucy? You know I am. Really happy? Is life so wonderful for you that you want to cling to it, even though you're powerless to enjoy it the way others do? Frank, what's come over you? You sound so different. Don't put on the light, Lucy. I told you not to put them on. What happened to you? You look like someone else. I am someone else. Someone you never knew. Your hair. Your face. I, I hardly recognize you. What do I remind you of, Lucy? Don't be afraid to say it. I remind you of an ape. Frank. And I feel like something out of the jungles. Frank. What are you doing with that razor? Razor? Are you going to kill me? You're afraid? No. I'm not afraid. You're ill, my dear. I've seen it coming on. Your mind is ill. She told me you stood in the way of our happiness. She told me I had to get rid of you if I wanted her. Oh, Frank, I'm so sorry for you. You feel sorry? me? Yes. I've been afraid of this. I've seen you change. I... I don't care what you do to me. Lucy. I'm ready. I'm ready now for anything. You're back. Yes, I'm back. Well? You still want me, Viola? I told you how I wanted you. Yes, providing I got rid of her. You wanted me to kill her. I never used that word. But you inferred it. If you have murder in your heart, it must come to the surface. You have murder in your heart. Have I? Murder and hate. Yes, yes, you're right. I have. I have reason to hate. I loved once, and he was a fiend, a German fiend, a goose-stepping, hiling, rotten fiend. I loved him, and I believed in what he said, and then he left it. So that's how you lived in your appearance. Oh, I know. What difference does it make as long as I had everything I wanted? But I can love again, Frank. I can love you. Me and my money. Yes, you and everything you call your own. Frank. Well... Did you kill her? No. 
What happened? Why didn't you go through with it? Because the job you did wasn't perfect. She deserves to live much more than you. Frank, do. Frank, what are you doing with that animal? Yes. Yes. Wanted to make a murderer of me, didn't you? Frank, don't be a fool. It, it was all a joke. Was it? You know, I wasn't serious. You know, it. Why did you open the window? Come here, Viola. No. Come here. No. down there in civilization. Go of me, please. Let go of me. There are people down there, Viola. Good people, not people like us, not animals, apes who belong in the jungle. If you love me, Frank, you'll let me go. You know you love me. I can't love you. Now I can only hate you. You made me that for you. Frank. Lean over. Through the window. No. Lean over. Look down. Would you like to join the others in the street? Would you like to join the civilized ones? You can yes. join them down there, but first you must purify yourself. You can join them, Viola, and they'll have you. Then death. Oh, oh, don't do it, no. Go to them, Viola. Go to them. Go with you. Those of us who live in dignity, who respect the percepts of the conscience and the community of humans we call the world, to those life is a joy and a wholesome experience much to be desired. But to the others, the very few others whose feet are molded in clay, it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. Written by Lawrence Clee, Hart McGuire narrates as the clock... And you heard Richard Davies as Frank, Georgie Sterling as Viola, Wendy Playfair as Lucy, Max Osbiston as Fred. The Clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production. <laughs>